Oh, wow. Tēnā koutou katoa. Welcome back to the Drive Time Show with your girl, Ms. Leah. Um, today, uh, I am chatting with somebody from what I would consider the the, the paradise of Taranaki uh, down in Kāpunga. Now, a new barber shop has opened but with a difference. And I don't think in the time that I've lived in Kāpunga, I have ever seen a barber shop. And now after many years, I can finally say there actually is a place in Kāpunga that you can go and get your haircut and today I'm actually joined with Sam who runs the Second Chance Barbers which is actually located out of the old Kapunga Bowling Club. Um, it's also an initiative that's part of Start Taranaki which provides a service that offers um, both free and cheap haircuts to the local community but also Start Taranaki is um, something that I actually remember growing up on, well not technically me growing up uh, with Start Taranaki but I lived across the road from Start Taranaki and the amazing mahi that they do with the rangatahi um, and, and helping our rangatahi at risk young people from all over Aotearoa uh, to get back on that pathway, to get onto that pathway of what they are truly amazing at and our rangatahi that we have uh, coming through are amazing and we really need to focus on how amazing they really are. But today I'm joined with Sam. Kia ora, Sam. Welcome to the show. Kia ora, Leah. It's great to have you here today. And um, I'm just like, wow, when I saw that there was, um, you know, a barber shop in Kaponga, I was like, wow, that is crazy. I feel like, I want to say it's been probably like a couple of decades <laughs> since there was a barber shop in Kaponga. Yeah. Do you have any information around when the last barber shop was there? Yeah, I do actually. We were um, recently, myself and Nev, who's the CEO of Start, we were in um, a cafe, I think it was, and we were talking to someone about it and there was someone with a kaponga rugby jersey or something behind us and they kind of were eavesdropping and listening in and then they sort of said, oh, is there going to be a barbershop there? And then they knew the person who had the first barbershop in kaponga, which Whoa. went back a long time, maybe 1970s, something like that. Um and yeah, she was saying too that she might have had some old photos of, of when it was around and she was going to dig them out um, for us to use. But yeah, it's been a long time, um, I think, since there was a lot of things in Kaponga, but yeah, particularly a barbershop. <laughs> but yeah, there was once there, one there once upon a time. Wow. Yeah, I can definitely imagine. I probably should ask my nan because my nan has been in Kaponga for many, many years. So she probably does know that when that, that occurred. But 1970s, gee, that's a, that's a while ago. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. So so how did that come about how did it come about that you guys wanted to bring in a, a barber shop into Kapoa? Yeah, so um like over the years um we've had a lot of kids that um have wanted to do the trade of barbering. Um mm -hmm. and then one of the main, one of the biggest things on the program too, when they come back from doing like four weeks in the bush um and coming into the house, they've always First thing they'd ask was, "Oh, can we go get a haircut? Can we go get a fade?" Yeah. Um, and you know, within like youth culture as well, like you know, having a fresh haircut and, and looking styly and all those sort of things, you know, is always at the forefront of what they want. Um, and so over time, um, like we'd meet barbers that would come out sometimes to the marae, give them them fades. Um, sometimes we'd take them into barber shops. Um, and then yeah, we had like a couple of uh, young people on the program that wanted to do it, and so we made connections with local barber shops and got them in for work experience and stuff like that. So it was just always one of those things that um, kind of stuck around. Um, and yeah, we had sort of always had young people that wanted to do it. And so fast forward, um, as time's gone on, it's got harder and harder to get um, our rangatahi into work experience um, mm. and, and to providers in the community for various different reasons. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes too, they're not always ready to go into that public space and be around a new boss and not be around the staff that they've gotten used to. And so they don't actually kind of meet their full potential um, or they don't, you know, try as hard as they could because they're nervous of, you know, making a mistake or just whatever, because they haven't been in these environments. Like some of them haven't been at school since, you know, they were like 11, 12. So we really wanted to look at like, okay, what is a course and what is the work experience that maybe we could do in house that we know that the young people would buy into, but we would also be a wicked um, service for the community as well. And what would help mm. us reintegrate um, not only the, the rangatahi or the, or the young fellas um, into um, 
you know, engaging with people, but also start Taraki. How can we give back to our local rural communities as well? Mm, absolutely. And, you know, studying in a, in a place like Kaponga, um, you know, I think that that's just really, really cool. And and cool to hear that you guys have done something with, with the bowling club because the bowling club hasn't been, you know, um, in use for some time now. So so what did the rangatahi, the, the guys that you guys look after at Start Taranaki, did they, re, did they get in there and and they created the space or? Um, so actually, I mean, I think the bottom club, the last members, um, had to shut it down like 2010. And so it sat there for a while. Um, and then at one point, um, it was going to be used for various things. It was going to get ripped down. And then, um, I got donated to start. And the first thing that we were going to do was run like community gardens from there. Um, oh, to yes. do a bunch of planting out the back and people would just come and go. And perhaps the boys could be part of, you know, maintaining those gardens, learning all that, um. But it went out the window because of all the chemicals that are used on the grass over the years. Oh, yes. You can't plant something for like 20 years. Um, and so we did some planter boxes and stuff, but it didn't quite take. And so it's just been sitting there for ages. But, um, you know, like going back in my past too, like I've um, always had the dream of, of creating a youth space. Um, I, was, I, back, I grew up in Christchurch. Um, and so I put together like recording studios and youth spaces there. And so I'd always kind of had my eye on the bowling club um yes and then we were fortunate enough to build a strategic partnership with the toy foundation um cool. which meant that we could kind of allocate some funding um to what we wanted to do and so me and hayden um who's been a massive driving force behind this whole thing he's actually the one that's done a lot of the building a lot of the wow. like design and he's really multi-talented with that kind of stuff um we've been looking around at different spots for barbershops and stuff we kind of wanted so we looked in altham we looked at Kaponga. And then, like, we we're kind of just one day, it's like bowling club. <laughs> we we're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, hang on, where can we put it? And so we started kind of looking around, seeing different spots and what we could do. And um, I had some graffiti artist friends from Christchurch who are really, really talented, like world known. And the four walls around the bowling club too, I was like, man, we could get them here to paint that up, and then we could put the barber shop in here, have the studio. So it kind of just like grew like that. And then we struggled to find builders. We struggled to find people that do it so Hayden was like I'll just do it and then we've had a lot of start staff they're youth workers now but they've been various things in the past um and so you know everyone kind of just chipped in um and because of the toy foundation's awesome support um mm. you know we didn't have a lot of constraints in terms of like oh we can't do this or we can't do that but we you know we've still wanted to work within a budget um and it kind of just took flight from there we went and looked at a few barber shops around and got some ideas and then realized okay it's actually quite simple but we wanted it to look as professional and give that actual experience of a barber shop to the the rangatahi that are coming in and to the the customers as well um so yeah that's kind of how it came to be um and then yeah we had definitely had some young people be part of um the creation of it um the studio as well but it was one of those things where like when we were telling people about it people were like whatever you know um, oh wow! Yeah, yeah, really? You know what? Bowling, you know what? Barbershop, you know, studio, like that kind of stuff. So even the boys yeah. were like, "Oh yeah," you know, we'll believe it when we see it. So it was kind of like it had to kind of get a bit of traction. And once we kind of started getting things up and actually getting past the, the point of actually like just having the vision to actually do it, and that's when people started really mm. actually believing that it could happen. Yeah. And you've done it. That's just that's the thing. You got yeah. you got that vision, and you're there. You're there. Yeah. It's exciting it's cool yeah it's really cool that is exciting hey going by your guys um social media your facebook uh i do notice that you guys are getting quite full so you guys have a few customers that are already coming through yeah i was surprised actually so um yeah it's been it's gone gone off to a really good start so people um around Kaponga, like a lot of like mums with with boys i think you know like Aww. people don't pay the petrol like mm -hmm. Barbering is quite expensive, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. 25, 30 bucks, you know, even kids can be like 15, 18. So like potentially like a single mom or, or a family, have got like four boys, you know, mm -hmm. they can't afford 80 to 100 bucks by the time you do petrol and all that sort of stuff. So True. I think the fact that, um, you know, as close, like rural communities don't often have this stuff um, and word of mouth does spread quite quickly. The fact that it's based on koha or, you know, it can even be free. Oh. So like we don't expect people to pay because we don't have any overheads um 
any of that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, like down the track, we'd love to turn it into a social enterprise where um, we can, you know, sort of like pay the boys, give them you know meaningful work um, and mm. have that money feed back into other community endeavours that we do. But I think at the basis of what we're doing, yeah, it's really more about community. It's about, you know, sort of opening people's eyes up to what it is that start does. Because, um, you know, there's always the perception of they're working with these type of youth and da 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 da, da which for sure is, uh, there is, a, you know, there's an ugly side to what we have to do and what is happening yeah. in the community, you know, with youth offenders Absolutely. and stuff like that. But at the time, they were all part of a community once that potentially failed them and reconnecting them back with the community is good for everyone's um, right. mental health. You no, know, it's good for everyone's sense of belonging. Absolutely, Sam. I totally agree with you. And I bet you some of the, the young boys that come out of there are probably ama- end up being amazing young men. So I think that giving them this opportunity is just amazing. So, so, so cool. Hey, have you got any last minute words that you wanted to share with our viewers and listeners uh, this evening? Um, no, just if you do have a chance to come out, um, even just to grab a coffee or even to see the awesome artwork or you know, of a young person and that's um, kind of at a loose end that could be interested in wanting to get, um, you know, trained to be a barber um, or just would benefit from the space, um, just whatever. Feel free to, to come out and, and check it out, um, come and grab a coffee um, and I guess just, you know, watch the space because, um, yeah, it is, has had a really awesome response from the local community. The young people that we're working with have brought into it massively in terms of wanting to learn and train and, you um, yeah, I think it's going to be awesome for for not just Kaponga but South Taranaki in general and the more of these things that we can do and kind of get past the fact that, you know, we are living in these small rural towns, um, you know, and get back to, to living as communities and engaging with each other. I think that'd be really cool. So I appreciate you having us on today. Oh, you're totally welcome, Sam. It's been great chatting with you and I feel like there's going to be so many young boys and children uh, and men in Kaponga with like pretty epic hair, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, hopefully. I mean, it is called, it's not called Second Chance Barbers because you have to come back for a touch up, you know, like the, the haircuts will be pretty cool. So, yeah. oh, that's awesome. Hey, thanks so much, Sam, for joining me today. All the very best. No, 